avoidant explains exactly how to get your ex back. Who is that avoidant? Why, that would be me. And who better to know what your ex is thinking and feeling than another avoidant? Hi, this is Lucia with The Art of Love. I'm a dating and relationship expert specializing in helping you get your ex back or to get over your ex and your favorite ex back expert. And I hope you enjoyed the new video format with the photos, mainly of oceans from exotic locations around the world. So please let me know what you think in the comments below. And welcome back, my beautiful no contact army. Have you been a good little soldier? If you have, then you've downloaded my app Silencio and you are staying in no contact. And if you haven't, you can do that right now. The link is underneath every single video and podcast. And if you too would like to join our no contact army, all you have to do is hit the subscribe button and the bell notification and you're in. And to read our manual, go to nocontactsecrets.com where you can read two free chapters before you purchase the book. All right, the video you've all been waiting for, I'm sure, if you were dating an avoidant. And actually, let's find out, were you dating an avoidant or are you dating an avoidant? Because someone left a comment recently that said, you know, some people think that they were dating an avoidant, but it was just the fact that their ex was not interested. They weren't necessarily an avoidant. And that's true, because when I did the test with my community, 80% said they were dating an avoidant. That seems very high. So is it 80%? I don't know. What you can do is that you can go online. There are plenty of tests to find out whether your ex really was an avoidant and also find out what you are so that we, you make sure you are dealing with an avoidant. Okay. So there's four things that you want to keep in mind with an avoidant. And so I'm going to explain to you how we think and feel and it'll make it easier to understand why you need to do what you need to do to get your ex back, to get your avoidant ex back. Okay, so with an avoidant, the first thing is slow your roll. No fast moves. Do not try to push things along. Do not try to speed up. Do not be saying I love you real fast. Do not be asking for a commitment real fast. Just calm down. It's like a cat. If you approach an unknown cat quickly, they're probably going to run away. So you want to slowly, slowly take a few steps at a time. And before you know it, there you are petting the cat. So don't be trying to rush things if you're dating actually anybody, because at first you don't know what their relationship, uh, their attachment style is. And going slow, it works with every single attachment style. It obviously works with avoidant. It works with a secure because they're secure. Fine. They don't care. And it works in reverse actually for the anxious because since you're not bringing it up, you'll actually make them more anxious, which will make them more likely to want to commit to you and and it will raise their interest level. So interestingly, it works on all attachment styles going slow. All right. Don't be rushing. The second thing to remember with an avoidant is trust. Trust is everything. If we cannot trust you... (laughs) you're going to lose our interest real fast. It's better to just tell the truth. We can handle the truth. (laughs) Just tell us. I had had a boyfriend once. I'd been dating for a number of years and I had a feeling he was cheating. So I said to him, are you cheating? And he said, yes. (laughs) It's like, okay, well, thank you. I appreciate the honesty. Um, And I didn't break up with him. I mean, I should have. And I said, well, you got to stop. Yeah, like that's going to do anything. That was many years ago. But people actually really appreciate when you tell them the truth. When they know that whatever you they ask you, you're going to tell them the truth. They may not like the answer, but at least they know you're telling the truth. And one of two things is going to happen is um, they'll appreciate it and stay with you. It's like, okay, I can really trust this person. Or they're going to stop asking questions that they don't really want to know the answer to because they know you're going to tell the truth. And by the way, if you're finding this video helpful, be sure to give it a like in order to help the YouTube algorithm to help other people to find this video and find out all about their avoidant ex. So with an avoidant, trust is everything. If they start to suspect that something is up, that you're not that interested, that you're pulling back, that you're up to something, because we always have our antenna up. Our radar is up 24 seven, nothing gets past us. We are so sensitive to signs of possible rejection that we're ready to pull back the second we suspect there's a rejection coming. To give you an example, let's say you usually 
text back within a few minutes or a few hours, unless of course maybe you're at work and you can't or you're on an airplane or something and they know that. If all of a sudden it takes you four hours to respond, six hours, eight hours, 12 hours, I can guarantee you the person that you respond to, your, your boyfriend, girlfriend, they are not the same person that they were before you took that long to respond. They've already taken a step back and avoidance already have one foot out the door anyway. So now they have one and a half feet out the door. <laughs> they may not say anything, but they, their attitude towards you has already started to change. They are starting to deactivate as it's called. And so you better have an, a good reason as to why it took you so long and it better be plausible because if it's not, then it's like, mm, this person can't be trusted. And if I can't trust someone and they're going to hurt me, I'm not going to be hurt. And therefore I'm going to, I'm out of here. <laughs> All right. That's how we think. So trust is paramount with an avoidant. Now, one thing to also keep in mind is that while you can't show too much interest in the beginning, as I said, slow your roll, you also need to show enough interest and it's a fine line to walk and I know it's a pain because it's like well I don't know am, am I showing too much am I showing not enough you're gonna have to gauge that yourself by their reactions because if you're too needy we see that as weakness if you're trying to push the relationship along it's like no 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 slow down however if you're acting cool like yeah whatever I'll see you when I see you I'll text you when I text you then it's like yeah uh, I'm not down with that so I'm out so you got to find that fine line to walk with an avoidant. If there's one thing and only one thing that an avoidant wants you to know, it's this. And I have a slogan for you. Hey, if you didn't act whack, I wouldn't need to pull back. Okay. That's how we think. We don't just pull back just for the hell of it. We're not crazy. If we're into you and everything's going fine, why would we pull back? So if we do pull back, it's because either you start to act needy, meaning that you didn't slow your roll, you made fast moves, you were trying to move the relationship along. We take longer to want to be committed. So while you think, well, we should be in a commitment by now, the avoidant is like, mm, not there yet. Or you didn't show enough interest. You took a long time to respond to a text all of a sudden or you started acting whack in some other way. And so we pull back. There's always a reason. We don't just do it because we're avoidance. All right. So how to get an avoidant back? Well, getting them back is simple, but since most people who are trying to get an ex back are trying to get an avoidant back and they are anxious, it's not easy for you because you're anxious anxious, which means that during no contact, you're going to be breaking no contact. You're going to be contacting them. You're going to be begging. You're going to be writing letters, making the grand gesture, pouring out your feelings. Let me tell you something about pouring out your feelings. If you find yourself in a situation where you feel that you need to quote unquote, pour out your feelings, or someone tells you to do that, you've already lost. You're already in trouble. You're, you're probably already done. If you find yourself in a situation where you need to do that, that means that you really effed up. It's like, oh, now you're going to share your feelings. The only time you should be pouring out your feelings is on your wedding day. When you do your vows, pour away on your wedding day. Other than that, pouring out your feelings rarely, if ever, helps you to attain whatever goal you're trying to attain. Okay. So with the avoidant to get them back, it's super simple. Just leave them alone. That's it. Leave them alone. <laughs> Unless of course you cheated or took them for granted. And in that case, I do have a video that I did on that. And I will put the link in the upper right hand corner on YouTube, but an avoidant needs to feel the loss. They need to feel like they lost you before they can even think about coming back. And I did a video on that too. What do you know? And I'll put that link in the upper right hand corner. So you reaching out 
is not going to get them back. It's just going to push them further away and they know they can take their time and they're going to see you as needy and weak. And it's like, oh, God, I didn't know she was so needy. I didn't know he was so weak that if I broke up with them, they were going to act like this because we hate to see weakness or, or neediness in both ourselves and in other people. So, you know, as an avoidant, for me, it's super simple to do no contact. And I get triggered every time I hear someone say, oh, I broke no contact. I'm like, oh, why? Why? I know why. <laughs> because you have anxiety, which is why you need to work on it while you're waiting for them to contact you. Because without that anxiety, I'm telling you, no contact is a piece of cake. When I went through um, the break th breakup that led me to then helping other people to get their ex back, I didn't know about no contact at first. And I had heard at, at that time about the 30 day rule. So I thought, all right, I'll do 30 days of no contact and then I'll reach out. No, you know, no big deal. I wasn't like, oh my God, I got to do 30 days. I was like, sure, no problem, whatever. Just get on with my life in the meantime. And then, of course, I didn't have to do that because he reached out after two weeks. But people with an avoidant attachment style, we don't have anxiety after a breakup. We're like, okay, no problem. No contact? Sure. No, how long? Two months? Three months? Not a problem. <laughs> so you want to get rid of your anxiety so you too can get to that point where no contact is a summer day. A walk on an exotic beach and speaking of exotic beaches please remember to leave a comment below and let me know what you think of this new video format with the photos of exotic beaches from around the world. And in the meantime, if you would like my help to get your ex back, you can contact me at theartoflove.net and we will send you the rates. They are not on my website. And the direct link to that is below every single video and every single podcast. If you found this video helpful, please like, subscribe and share. If you're listening to this as a podcast, please rate and review. And finally, remember that love inspires, empowers, uplifts, and enlightens.